We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio, News Talk 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI, and 1000, KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Our guest by phone, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief of Forbes Media, Steve Forbes. So, Steve, one question I had for you uh, before we get off the economy is one of your books, and I am, I'm biting at the bit to start, I just bought it on, on tape, is... Uh, how capitalism will save us why free why free people and free markets are the best answers to today's economy do you think that theory could happen today i mean is is the government so regulated our economy that that really capitalism isn't it can't save us anymore because we're too regulated well regulations as you know are a form of taxation and even the government admits that regulations now cost us uh, the economy 1. Point Seven five trillion dollars a year, bigger than every economy in the world except for the top six or seven, and uh, the, that's a self-inflicted wound. Everyone knows you need certain rules, you know, like you don't go a uh, hundred miles an hour in a school zone, but it's quite another when the government tells you what to drive, where to drive, and when to drive, and uh, these rules are crushing us. And uh, but uh, thankfully, if we uh, get a few reforms, uh, tax reform. Uh, the Federal Reserve stopped trashing the value of the integrity of the U.S. dollar and uh, start all over again on health care, you'd see this economy take off like a rocket. Uh, people are uh, chomping at the bit to, to, to move forward. But uh, it's, it's like a nightmare. The government just makes you feel like you're in a bog and barely can move your legs. Yeah, it's true. David Stockman the other day, I, I know you, you heard this article. I, I think they rebroadcasted it on... on uh on uh, Wall Street Journal, where he talked about there's really no substance behind the market right now. He says it's all federal money, and he's anticipating a crash. W- what do you think about that? Do you think the stock market well, is going to keep on moving Well, one, up? one thing uh, up to now has been extraordinary is that uh, the larger companies in our economy have uh, put their balance sheets in order. Uh, they've uh, got a lot of cash. They have uh, become very, very competitive. Uh, their bottom lines are looking good. Uh, and uh, that's one reason why the market has gone up. And the market also has gone up because uh, there's nowhere else to put your money. I mean, we, we used to have a thing called interest. Remember that? <laughs> when you put <laughs> interest on your savings? <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> uh, the Federal Reserve has banned that for now. So uh, where, where do you go to get, a, get income? It, it's a perverse thing. And, uh, so, uh, and they also have to keep in mind that in real terms, the stock market's really no higher today than it was in the late 1990s, almost 15 years ago. So, uh, yeah, we get these nice ups and occasional downs, horrific downs, but uh, we're treading water. We're really back to where we were. I mean, I've, just, I've just recouped most of my losses, but all I've done is recoup the losses. Yeah, and uh, considering the pace of technology, I mean, if, if the government just behaved itself, uh, we'd have incomes growing again. Remember, median incomes, American families, their their real incomes have gone down in the last uh, six years. And uh, in the last 10 or 12 years, they've gone nowhere. So uh, we're like a car on a superhighway. We should be going 75 miles an hour if no one was looking 85 or 95. And uh, instead, we uh, may get it up from 20 miles an hour to 35. Well, it's not the way you're going to win a NASCAR race. As you can see, we're blessed with the leadership that we currently have in office. <laughs> I, I, I notice a tinge of sarcasm there. <laughs> yeah, really. no, no, North Korea likes this, but I don't oh, think anyone yeah. else does. Oh. You know, we, we keep hearing about this uh, other country that's going in and taking uh, people's savings. Do you see any possibility of that happening in this country or, or actually going back and taking our gold back again? A, a Cyprus-type scenario? Yeah, plus yeah, taking our uh, gold. Yeah, and there's, uh, the sad thing is there's more than one way to do it. They may not be as overt and crude as they were in Cyprus. And uh, because they did that, steal people's bank accounts, uh, what that means is any time there's a whiff of financial trouble, first thing people are going to do in countries like Spain and France is pull your money out of the bank and perhaps take some of it out of the country. Because in Cyprus now, you can get some money out of the bank, but you can't take it out of the country. So uh, this is just going to inflame future crises in this country. Uh, the Federal Reserve is taking a certain amount of your income each year called uh, inflation. And don't just look at the CPI numbers. Uh, I don't know how they concoct those now. 
but uh, you go to the grocery store or the gas pump, and you can see uh, things are much more expensive than they were four or five years ago. The Federal Reserve has stated publicly they want a 2.5% inflation rate, so take them at their word at 25 If you're making $40,000 a year, that means you're going to pay, in effect, a $1,000 tax uh, because of higher costs. And who in the world gave the Fed the right to uh, impose that kind of a tax on the American people? Amazing, isn't it? Uh, a little segue here, uh, Steve. You were talking about, you mentioned North Korea, and I noticed on Facebook you were talking quite a bit about North Korea. What, what do you think is going to happen? Um, I mean, are we, are we going to stand up to them at all, or are we just going to let this guy, you know, blow smoke at us? Well, thankfully, uh, we are sending some uh, military equipment over there, uh, doing military flights, uh, and uh, making it clear, and I think the reason the administration is responding this way is we do have 30,000, 25,000 troops there. And uh, so if anything happens, we are involved. Like it or not, we are involved. And uh, what I think is happening is, uh, and this is what makes it dangerous, is that the North Koreans, especially this baby dictator, uh, wants to uh, shake down the West for more money, you know, or else we'll get, uh, we'll misbehave like a kid. Uh, we'll keep crying unless you pay us off. And uh, I, I don't think, I think where that rope has been played out, we're not going to pay him off. So he may uh, do something, uh, the military over there, so North Korean military may do something truly foolish and uh, miscalculate. And so uh, it is a dangerous situation. But even uh, putting that aside, uh, what they're doing in cyber warfare, we focus on China and Iran, but the North Koreans are misbehaving very badly there. And we have to remember, in the last year or so, they sank a North Korean naval vessel and killed 46 sailors. South Korean. So, uh, so uh, this, this, this is very dangerous. Uh, dangerous isn't the word when you talk about this young dictator over there, but we have a young dictator here as well, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> Another little tinge of sarcasm. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Steve, if we do get into a war with Korea... If, which I hope we don't do, but if we do get into a war with Korea, are we going to treat it the same as we treated Vietnam and Afghanistan, uh, where we where uh, we hold uh, back? No, I think uh, what you're going to see is a, a replay, although it's going to be bloody, because Seoul, Korea, the, the capital of South Korea, is only 25 miles from the DMZ. So uh, they're right in the crosshairs. But if uh, a conflict did happen, uh, North Korea would be crushed very quickly. Uh, or it will be a replay of what happened in Iraq in 1991, or even 2003, and uh, when we originally went in. Uh, this World War II kind of uh, warfare with the uh, North Korea's Stalinist uh, massed armies, uh, they would get crushed, but it would be uh, horrifically bloody, and who knows how what, what the Chinese would do. That, that's, that's the trump card, is what would the Chinese do, and maybe even the Russians. Uh, we have about a, a little over a minute left, and I have another question for you, something that you covered on the show that I thought was was kind of ironic, and I apologize for this, Clay, because this may be a problem for you. But I want, before you do that, I just want to make one statement, Steve, and I hope you're aware of this, but there's only one Republican that voted for Obamacare, and that was John Roberts. Oh, that's Man, oh, uh, gonna, that That Chicago uh, politics in action, he did not do that uh, just uh, in the middle of the night. This is true. Well, we've got about 45 seconds left, but you had a great story on the program last week about pay as you weigh on flights. That's going to cost you some money, Clay, unfortunately. But uh, what? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, going to cost all of us who are metabolism challenged uh, money <laughs> and uh, the, the idea of paying by weight. But I think it's going to happen. One, it's going to be uh, hit with a lot of lawsuits of uh, discrimination. Uh, for all sorts of reasons. It's a loss of uh, waiting the, to happen. <laughs> the loss of traffic. And, uh, you know, can you imagine uh, trying to determine whether the scale is accurate to TCA, you know, TSA? It's uh -huh. bad enough. And then having to get on a scale, you're going to have to have <laughs> curtains so people don't uh, see what your real weight is. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that uh, only only an expert could come up with that idea. Well, the fat Silly lady, idea. fat lady, just sang. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for the time. We would love to have you back. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in 167 hours on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.